I know TPM means cleaning for one thing, but surely the cleaning staff can do all that. <laughs> well, my boy, you see, when we say cleaning, it doesn't just mean sweeping up the corridor and wiping the window glass. Of course, it is important to keep your working environment clean, but cleaning in TPM terms means something a bit different. For example, instead of leaving the tops of the machines and the surrounding area untidy, you need to sort out what is really necessary and what isn't, and clear things up accordingly. And then you want to avoid scattering splashes of oil and showers of metal filings and dust and all of that, right? After that, you can proceed a bit further and think up some good ideas of how to avoid such things in the first place. That's what cleaning really means. Meaningful cleaning up of the equipment. But why all that cleaning? Precisely. That's the whole point. Why is it necessary to pay so much attention to equipment cleaning? <laughs> It's easy enough for them to say. They order us to clean everything up, but what's the point of it all? Well, just have a quick look around. And if you think it's tidy, that's good enough, isn't it? Well, if that's all it takes, then my area's perfect already. What do you mean by unnecessary things? Do we have anything like that? Well, what about that pipe behind your bench? You don't use it at all, so it's useless, isn't it? Where? Behind the bench? I haven't looked down there for years. I wouldn't put my hand down there. It's covered in oil and dust. Can't we forget that and check somewhere else? You can't forget about it. You've got to do it sometime, so why not start off with the dirtiest place? What? We'll get all covered in oil and muck around there. I can't meet my girl smelling like a sludge pot. Now, hold on there. Cleaning and all that's okay. But we've been doing things in the same way for a long time. We start changing things around, everything will get completely out of whack. The machines and me too. <laughs> but this is a factory, not a hospital. Does it really do any good? <laughs> of course, you eliminate the problems. Like magic. That's really great. It's like saying all we have to do is polish the car and we don't have any breakdowns, right? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, so, have we go. still got a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, TPM is like a magic formula, but only if you work at it. You see, equipment cleaning doesn't mean just polishing the surface like you do with your car. You have to make sure the inside of all the equipment is clean as well. For example, you have to take off all the covers, remove the dirty oil from the tank, that sort of thing. In short, you have to get rid of all the filth that's been accumulating inside over the months or years. Sounds tough to me. Like there'd be a mountain of dirt to get rid of. A mountain of dirt, exactly. That's why we should remove it. Sure, sure. But the more you use a machine, the dirtier it gets. That's just the way things are, right? Precisely. The way things are with you. But they don't have to be. You're all so used to wallowing in dirt, aren't you? Hmm. Yeah, but if we clean that much, is it really going to do us any good? Yes, of course it is. You'll stop having accidents and defective products and breakdowns as well. You see, the causes of all those things are hidden away in places you've never taken a proper look at. Under benches, in corners, beneath the machines. Dirt and dust and loose parts and leaks that you haven't noticed. Those are the things behind accidents and bad products and breakdowns. That's why we need proper cleaning, thorough cleaning, not just superficial cleaning. In fact, it could be said that the real meaning of cleaning is checking. Cleaning makes it possible for you to discover exactly what's wrong with your machines. All those loose bolts and dripping oil and so on. Repair and improve all the bad parts and everything will come up roses, I promise you. 
So cleaning is checking, eh? I see what you mean. Good. You're getting the idea. So let's give it a go, shall we? Clean properly, and you'll be well on the way to achieving zero accidents, zero defects, and zero breakdowns. And I guarantee the day will come when you look back and realize what fools you were not to do it earlier. Let's see what the professor means by taking a look at some actual examples from factories that have received PM prizes. In just about any factory, there are bits of equipment that nobody has ever inspected carefully and certainly haven't been cleaned. Oil and metal shavings and dust are all stuck together thickly so that you can't even touch the surface of the machine. Factory, as the cleaning process went on, an unbelievable number of faulty parts emerged, including the loose bolts and oil leaks the professor mentioned. Every problem point was marked with a label, which was only removed once the fault had been fully checked and repaired or improved in This press pit used to be so covered in oil and scrap, it was almost impossible to walk around in it. Checking and maintenance had been ignored as well. But as a direct result of the cleaning, all the causes of the dirt could be found and removed, and breakdowns have been largely avoided since then. You can see there's been a dramatic transformation. To get some idea of the challenges involved in TPM cleaning, let's look at how the workers in this factory dealt with various problem areas. The floor in this section used to be covered in oil and water, so the workers couldn't walk around without wearing special long boots and aprons. Ordinary safety boots wouldn't have lasted more than a month or so. The workers decided that what they all wanted was a workplace where it was possible to work wearing safety boots and ordinary overalls just the same as workers in other parts of the factory. Everyone in the group tackled the idea together with this main point in mind. After a long process of trial and error, they eventually developed this special platform to prevent the hot water from splashing all over them and onto the floor. The result clean, dry floors. Now they can all work in safety boots like everyone else and they even worry about the slightest drop of water on the floor. Next, let's look at an oil accumulation problem to do with conveyor belt lubrication. This press has to be lubricated after every three pressings. The problem was that oil tended to get stuck on the moulded products. It dripped first onto the conveyor belt and then either onto the frame or the floor. Because of this oil, dust and dirt got stuck to the belt and then to the products. If the products then moved onto the next press with dirt stuck to them, the result was an assortment of pimples, scratches or surface unevenness. In other words, defective products. The challenge here then was to control the oil, both to stop the production of faulty products and also clean up the working area. The worker's first attempt at a solution was to wipe the oil off the belt several times a day, but this was not really very efficient. They then thought about ways of scraping off the oil, 
and at last they came up with the idea of inserting a sheet of metal underneath the conveyor belt to scrape the oil off as the belt passes. The oil is then concentrated at one point and collected at the base of the sheet. The problem was successfully solved. The next example is extremely simple, but it serves to avoid the spread of dirt very effectively. At first, the workers tried using very thin vinyl sheets, but the air pressure tended to blow these around. They then decided to use stiff plastic sheets instead, with two simple clips at the top to hold them in place. This made it easy to remove the sheets for cleaning as soon as they get dirty. This idea also avoided dirt spreading around the equipment and improved the general look of the workplace. The workers were all very satisfied with their creation. In this next case, before improvement, this machine had no spatter cover. Sparks flew everywhere. This was a particularly dangerous and uncomfortable workplace. The workers suffered a lot from burns on the skin and face, and nobody was very eager to work here at all. But not only that, sparks also flew off onto other equipment and contributed to breakdowns. They sometimes also pitted the surface of products, making them defective. A variety of tests were undertaken. The workers even experimented with cardboard boxes. And eventually a solution was found. This spatter screen was added to the machine to stop the sparks flying. As you can see, it almost completely prevents spatter. Other equipment and products are no longer affected by sparks, nobody suffers burns anymore, and general morale and efficiency have shot up. The mixing devices in the blending room used to be covered in powder used in the blending process. Workers had to spend at least 30 minutes every day cleaning the equipment. The workers decided to do something about improving the filtering system. Cleaning time was drastically shortened to no more than about 10 minutes a week. And the door that was originally installed to prevent powder from spreading outside the blending room now serves to prevent outside dirt from getting in. These red lines are known as disposal lines. The idea is that the bin should never be allowed to fill up to the brim and overflow. If the trash reaches the line, it's thrown out immediately. A simple but effective idea. All over the factory, the cleaning equipment is kept clean and ready for immediate use. The important point is that any dirt should be removed as soon as it's spotted. Pretty good stuff, eh? A spanking clean shop floor is possible with some hard thinking and everybody's combined efforts. It's really not that difficult, you know. Just change your way of thinking a bit and get really stubborn when it comes to dirt and mess. My advice is to put some meaning into your cleaning and the best of luck with it.